Hey guys, it's Mama Bear. Come along with me today as I dehydrate soup for a trail meal. And I'm going to do it two ways. Come along with me. Thanks for sticking around. Yes, I said I'm going to dehydrate soup and I'm going to do it two separate ways. What I'm doing is dehydrating the ingredients separately so they can be put together to make a soup and I'm also dehydrating leftovers that I always adapt into a soup so that that will also be ready to, to prepare a meal on the trail. Um, come along and uh, into my kitchen and see how we do this. Well, thanks for coming into my kitchen. Um, I want to explain to you where I've been for the past few months um, and why I haven't been putting out as many videos as I promised I would put out. Um, I've been working full time and uh, taking care of my mom. Uh, I'm going to put a little picture of her in here. Hang on one second. This is my mom. She's 89. She's out there feeding the rabbits that come to the neighborhood. So she still has a good pigeon arm on her. Dementia's setting in. She's not as uh, sharp as she used to be. She loves her owls. She's got dementia and uh, she needs she needs extra care. It's all I can do. That's all that my heart will allow me to do to make sure she's taken care of. So, uh, so other things have gone into the background while I'm uh, providing care for my, my wonderful mom. Uh, let's, let's look into this recipe. Okay guys, thanks for sticking around. Um, I, I'm, today I'm making what I call a tomato vegetable soup. And oddly enough, it starts with spaghetti sauce. Um, I've chosen a spaghetti sauce that is low in fat so that it dehydrates nicely and um, this one is Classico tomato and basil. Let's show you that again. Classico tomato and basil. Um, I had, we had spaghetti and meatballs recently uh, although it was keto so we had uh, a different type of noodle with it. Um, this is just the sauce that's left over, so I've got some carrots and some peppers and onions and the tomatoes that were in the um, in the sauce itself. And uh, that is going to be one level, one of my methods. So when I make this into soup, I just add broth. So because it's convenient to carry on the trail, I'm going to add, what is this, an Aurora, an Aurora uh, bouillon cube. What I've got here today is a the plastic sheet from the dehydrator and we're using a Salton Vita Pro today with a, a thermometer on it so that we can adjust the temperature. Uh, I'm going to line this with parchment paper because I don't want the tomato sauce to stain this and it's easier to pick this up and it's more flexible for removing the sauce after it becomes like a leather. So this is step one. Let's get this one started and uh, see how it turns out. This would probably make two servings of soup, uh, so uh, maybe more. So I'll remember that when I package it up that this should be two servings. And you want this as thin and as even as possible. It's got big chunks of tomatoes in it so I don't want that to uh, I don't want any of those big pieces to be stuck together and uh, keeping each other from drying. Spread it out nice and thin. Just so you know, I've never done this dehydrated before, so uh, it's an experiment and I will show you in a follow-up video how it turns out. It is, uh, it's worth it, it was leftovers, right? But I know the um, dehydrated ingredients will work out. It's just how they're going to rehydrate that's going to be interesting. And uh, play it by ear. There we have one tray. Peppers and onions, carrots and tomatoes, and the sauce. This one I'm doing the items individually. 
and uh, we'll see how that one turns out. It's going to also have the bullion cubes and um, chopped up my vegetables. I, I like to keep a consistent size so that they dehydrate and then rehydrate pretty uh, similarly. There's my carrots. I'm only making enough for one or two servings, so that's enough. That's enough carrots for two servings. That's perfect. And that's just um, shredded carrots that I bought at the grocery store in uh, what do they call those matchstick carrots? So you see the side, the uh, holes in this. They're maybe a quarter of an inch. That would be too small or too large for the carrots. They would just fall right through. So I could switch up to this tray, this liner, which is mesh, but I think I'm going to use that for the peppers and onions instead. And I'm going to put a sheet of parchment on the one I'm going to use for the carrots. I've just taken that uh, plastic ring and I've just sketched out on a piece of parchment paper the uh, dimensions I needed and this seems like it's going to fit. I've got it upside down. So there we go. It's going to fit just fine. And again, you want to make sure it's not piled up on top of itself or on top of each other and, and uh, nice and evenly spaced so that it can dry evenly. They won't take long to dry at all. So if I put anything else on there that I want to dry with it, I want it to be something that's going to dry just as quickly because I'll take the trays off as they become dry. My ingredients today, I don't have anything else that's going on with this. In a previous video, I suggested not dehydrating onions in the house and using um, purchased dehydrated onions but today I'm going to do it this way just uh, because I've got this handy and I want to actually see how bad it is. I think it's going to be brutal. We're going to be crying all night long. I'm, I'm setting this at night so that I can check it in the morning. I know it's going to take six or eight hours so uh, overnight is good. Let's get that out of the way. Oh yes and again I've, I've set, mentioned this before the secret to not getting um, overwhelmed with this, the crying from your onions, slice off a lot more than you think on the bottom. Don't cut into the root end, cut away from it. Leave some spare there. For me, it's uh, onions are cheap. I'd rather, uh, I'd rather not cry. And I want a consistent size for all of these. When I've dehydrated these, veg these type of vegetables before, I've done them about the size of my thumbnail. So I'm going to go for that aim for that again. Let's see what I can get here with the, uh, the onions. I've got my vegetables all chopped up and uh, ready to go on the dehydrating trays. These vegetables are about the, the same density and they're all about the same size so I expect that they should dry fairly consistently with each other and they should dry uh, like pretty evenly. I'm really uh, confident about that. <clears throat> I'm just breaking apart the chunks of onions. We don't want them all stuck together like, like this. So I'm breaking those up into individual little segments. You want them separated so they dry. And now the orange peppers. These could have been all mixed up together before I put them on the tray or they could be left done separately the way I have done them. It doesn't really matter. As long as they're laid flat and even, it doesn't really matter. And there's the green peppers.
This is probably on here a little thicker than I would normally like, but that means it'll take longer to dry. I'm putting sauce on this uh, in this dehydrator, so this machine is going to take a while to dry that as well. So uh, six of this, half a dozen of the other. I don't think it really matters in this case. So that's it. That's the vegetables. So I'm going to open up the sauce and I'm going to pour, I'm only going to use about half of it because I don't need the whole amount to do this with and we can use the sauce for something else. Now I like to stir that a little bit before I uh, go mucking around with it. Make sure all the, all the tomato chunks from the bottom are brought up. If there's chunks in it I want to use them. There we go. I'm just going to ladle that. Oh, and I wanted to show you. I did the um, the plastic sheet with parchment again to keep the part the plastic sheet from being uh, stained, and it makes it come off of the sheet a little easier. I'm going to use about half the jar. See if I can fit half the jar on this tray. If I were doing just spaghetti for the trail, I would probably choose a, a sauce that doesn't have these big lumps in it, but because this is supposed to be soup, I do want those chunks. And it's tomato vegetable soup, so you want the tomatoes as part of it. There we go, just about half a jar. So as easy as that guys, I've set this for 140, it could go one, I'll turn it down to 130 if it seems to be too hot for the sauce. Before I go to bed I'll adjust that and um, that's it, I'm just going to turn it on and leave it until morning. Good morning, um, I, I haven't had a peek at this yet but Dan snuck a peek at it and he said it's not ready. So I'm going to bring you in and show you what I'm going to do with it in the middle layer of in the So I'm going to bring you in and show you what we do in the middle of the process if we're checking on it anyways. Come on in closer. Um, I've just shut this off and I'm giving it a check. Uh, this is nowhere near. The onions are nearly done. The peppers are not even halfway. Uh, I only have this set at about 130 degrees, 135 overnight. I'm guessing the dehydrator I've used of my own, this is Dan's, I'm guessing the dehydrator I used was a lot hotter because it would have been done by now. These would have been toasty. Um, the carrots. The carrots are definitely done. They look like hardly anything, but we know what they were to start with. They'll be great. I'll take that tray away. I'm going to rotate these so that they're in, on different levels. Okay, so here's the tomato sauce. It's just the sauce. It does have chunks of tomato in it, and they're a little rubbery, but they are not dry. Okay, so I dried this original initially with the plastic layer and the parchment. I'm going to take the, the plastic layer out of there now and leave it just parchment to finish drying. So I'll remove that. And this is the one that was already mixed. This is the peppers and the sauce mixed together. It's also not dry. The things are still quite spongy, so it needs to go on for a few more hours. You can see here at the edge, though, it's starting to, to get rubbery, and that'll be good. I want that to be dry so I can crush it up. And I'm also going to take the plastic layer out from that one. Remove that. There we go. I'm going to turn that back on. Okay, so because I'm alert and I'm, I'm awake, I can hang around and watch this for a little while. I'm going to turn the temperature up. It's going to be 145 or so, 140, 145. And I'm just going to, again, turn that on and leave it alone. Hey guys, I'm back. Let's have a look and see how this turned out. Okay, 
So this is the one that was combined ahead of time. The uh, sauce with the vegetables already in it. I've already labeled the bag with what's going to be going into it. And if I put the date on it, this is going to be the tomato vegetable soup. And I've written in that you add one cup of water and one bouillon cube. Now those bouillon cubes typically call for two cups of water. But I figure you could add more water if it's too salty or you can uh, have a little more strength in the, your beef, your um, bovril flavor, your bouillon flavoring. So because uh, parchment paper is a non-stick, this is peeling right off. Now on the um, on the plastic sheets that that come with the dehydrator, that would have been sticking badly. Now there's little bits that are stuck behind here. You want those little bits too because that's bits of sauce. See, it's got a bit of a leathery. It's sticking together in a leather type way, but it's not bad. It's actually uh, it it tears apart quite easily because I made it so nice and thin. And I definitely want to get every bit of that off of there. Okay, so I've got it in the bowl. I just want to break that up. I don't want any sharp edges that might poke through the plastic bag. I have freezer weight bags, but um, sometimes these things develop sharp corners and we don't really want to puncture that bag. This is the one that was just sauce. It's You can see the chunks of tomato here. And I've checked those. They're not spongy at all. They're pretty uh, They're pretty firm. I think we're good to go. Now this one, I'm going to put it in the bowl as well, but I would like to put this one through the mortar and pestle or through the, the magic bullet and see if I can make that into a powder. Look at that. It's like a sheet of leather right now. And it's not sticking to the parchment paper. That's it. It's easy. Done, done. Okay, so I've taken that uh, leathery tomato sauce and I've put it through the bullet. And I ended up with some, uh, some powdered instead, so it's not as likely to puncture. And it's going to be much smaller to carry. Now, I do have vegetables to put in there still. But now, part of that defeats the purpose of having tomato vegetable soup because the tomato chunks are going to be, um, they're going to disappear by puree or by um, mincing it like that. Okay, so that's gotten rid of that one. Let's remove the tray so it can go to the sink. And we have one more. This is our onions and orange peppers and green peppers and it smelled like pizza in here all night long. I expected it was going to smell a lot worse, but uh, and my eyes did not burn out of my head. These are just regular yellow cooking onions. I imagine if different onions might cause more trouble, but uh, or if you were doing a tray of uh, trays and trays of onions, it might uh, be different. This wasn't as bad as I expected. Okay, I'm going to dump this plastic tray into the same bowl that I was using for the other things. There we go. And they only stick a little. And it's quite easy for them to come off of this tray. But I can see there are there's staining on this tray now. There's no way that would have been able to handle the um, the tomato sauce. And and the only remnants that are left there is a little bit of dust. So I've got a bowl of veggies. That's just going to go right in that bag to make my soup. Because I already portioned that out to the amount that I wanted. It's half of a green pepper, half of an orange pepper, and one small uh, yellow cooking onion in with half a can of spaghetti sauce. And I'm going to mix it all together. I've written on the bag, it's tomato sauce with added veg. Soup or sauce, add three quarters of a cup of water. Now you may need to add more than that, but it's better to add less. And then add more if you need it. And that is that. Two meals for back backpacking and um, 
Dan has a trip to Algonquin where he's going for eight days. I won't be able to go because I'm uh, doing mother care, but uh, that'll help him out. I'm, I want to try them. I, he, they may not last until his camping trip. So there you have it guys, you can dehydrate leftovers, you can dehydrate a meal that is complete, already made, or you can dehydrate the portions of a meal. For example, Dan dehydrated ground beef to make a gravel and he chose not to put any seasoning in it, no garlic, no onion, no chili powder because he wants it to be neutral so he can make shepherd's pie or he can make taco or chili or whatever he wants by adding the different ingredients and seasonings later. Um, Figure out what works best for you and your, the way you eat and uh, go with it. I may make that into soup or I may put it over cauliflower or I may put it over, if I'm going to have a carb day then I may put it over pa regular pasta. Uh, it's, it's versatile, that's why I, I eat with these ingredients all the time. Onions and peppers and, and uh, tomatoes are a huge part of uh, my cooking style. Um, and I don't follow recipes very often. I follow a, a theory I, and then I just go with it. Uh, I, I go by smell and <laughs> go, by, go by taste and, and I just kind of mash it together and it, everything turns out good. So for those of you who stuck around to the end, thanks very much. Um, I want to explain where I've been. I've been um, working full time in an outfitter store, uh, you know, an outdoors camping, hunting, fishing running, kayaking, an outfitter and uh, because it's retail my hours have been retail hours. I haven't had time to go camping. I went camping twice last year. Um, I haven't had time to go out for a hike in the woods because my days off I'm doing mother care. I'm not making excuses, I'm just explaining what's going on. My priorities have shifted a little bit. Um, taking care of my mother and making sure I have my, my clean laundry has taken precedent over um, having taking time to film videos. I really miss being out in the woods. Uh, I, I hope to get out there more. Uh, right now I am I'm off of work. I'm taking a compassionate care leave so that I can be with my mother every single day. Um, she needs help with her medication. She needs help with her food. She needs help with her communications and she doesn't drive so she needs care. I've had, my sister was here for a few months and she took care of her almost exclusively while I was able to focus on my job a little more, but um, it got to the point where my own heart needed me to be off work. So uh, this lovely lady, I'm going to show her picture again, this lovely lady. Deserves my heart. She, did, she raised me by herself, 100% by herself. So I, I feel like I have to give back to her. I don't have, a, I don't, yes, I have a choice, but in my conscience, I wouldn't have a choice any other way. It, it's got to be this way or, or the highway. Um, I wouldn't be able to live with myself later if I didn't take this time. Thanks, guys. I hope to see you soon.